Hello, DFS family. Welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast, powered by Fantasy Six Pack. You are welcome. That is right. You do not have to listen to Dave's voice on the intro this week. I am your host, Pat Makowski. You can find me on Twitter at PattyMac33. I am joined by my co-host, the ever-so-steady Mr. David Eddy, uh, whom you can find on Twitter, at Corporal Eddy. Now, before we get started, please do us a quick favor and hit that like button. If you enjoy this podcast, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, then swing on over to fantasysixpack.net to check out some more great content. Now let's just take a minute to talk about that atrocious lineup that I beat you with last week, Davey. I don't know how it was atrocious. I gave you half the shit. Well, if we recall, and at the end of our little thing last week, it was, you know, my little spiel about my three uh, Denver stacked Hail Marys that were made fun of. Um, those three guys, by the way, uh, combined 10,600 uh, in the old salary pool, uh, put up almost a 6X number at 59.2 points. And that alone was probably what helped me propel myself to a 35-point victory last week. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, let's see. I mean, Drew Locke had a big day. Drew Locke was 5X. Um, everyone else did pretty good. You had pretty much like I thought he would, but that's why I played him because that's when the figures would happen. Yeah, David Montgomery got you 4X. And, I mean, for me, Corey Davis, I played him. He killed me. He didn't even get me 1X. Uh, yeah, he, Jones he, killed us both, though. I mean, that, that Aaron Jones against the Lions, he totally destroyed both of us last week. Yeah, Kiki QT got me 2X, and uh, my core play, unfortunately, Rashad Perriman, little over 1X. So, yeah, it didn't quite go so well for me, but um, shit happens. I literally can't win every week or you'd quit. I don't know about that. But you know what? It feels good to be a winner. So we're going to take it. We're going to run with it into, what do we got, two weeks left? 15 yeah, buddy. 16? Yeah, after this, we got one more episode, and that's it, oh, man. Gosh, what are we going to We're going to have to just call and talk over the phone for 45 minutes every Friday night. I kind of was hoping we could rub each other's backs. <laughs> and by backs, I, I, the, you can change the B and the A in that. <laughs> oh man all right folks let's uh, enough of the the hodgepodge let's get into this virgin mary question of the week this week oh yeah okay um, you know this is uh this is a little bit of a running new segment i think we're on what like week five or the, of this and uh so far so good so our question this week dave is uh you know it, it's pretty straightforward what is and under what circumstances do you consider a player that is listed as questionable? Yeah, so, I mean, I guess the reality of this question is, um, you know, you really shouldn't be officially building your lineups until, you know, at least 11.30 on Sunday because that's when all the teams have to produce their actives. and Well, I guess they have to produce their inactives early. So that's when you find out, who is officially, you know, out of the guys that, you know, were listed as questionable. Um, so, you know, as you're looking at your builds throughout the week and, you know, doing your research, I would definitely, you know, kind of keep a very open mind and, you know, pretty much, you know, consider everybody. And as news comes out, you know, during the week, um, if a guy that you were really interested in all of a sudden is out, then you really kind of should have a, a backup plan in mind um, and keep in mind that literally could mean rebuilding your entire lineup. If you know, a core player, something's out, it's not so much just pivot from one guy to the next because salaries probably don't match up. They're probably not on the same team. That's going to mess with your correlation, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, to answer the question, you know, what circumstances do you consider a player that is listed as questionable? You can consider him all week long. Just make sure that, you know, come 11.30 that you're keeping track and making sure that, you know, you're playing guys that are playing. 
Yeah. And you know, one of the things that, you know, has burnt me quite, you know, quite a few times in the past is, you know, I really like a guy and I keep him in there and then, you know, life takes over and you forget to change your lineup or something. And the guy goes out and you just piss the entry away. Um, so I try to, unless it's a absolute stud in an absolute smash spot, uh, I try to just even stay away from, you know, potentially just building lineups with anybody that has a questionable status at all. Uh, that's just a personal preference for me. So I don't got to worry about it too much, but um, <clears throat> yeah, good advice, Dave. So let's, uh, let's keep moving right along here. And uh, you've got a pretty uh, straightforward gospel this week. Why don't you share that with us? Yeah, man. A um, little bit, little bit back to, you know, the old-fashioned, old-school way of doing this for me. So last week I went a little bit crazy on my core play with Brashad Perriman. Um, him and Denzel Mims I've been playing a lot of this year just because the Jets have been so bad on defense. And so I've been kind of targeting them for my stacks. So naturally they've, you know, been a run back. Um, so that, you know, Perriman was a guy that I was in on. He was it's always, you know, cheap. And didn't produce last week. And I knew that that was a little bit out there. And I had mentioned that last week that, you know, it's a little bit different. But this week, we're just going straight country gravy, my friend. Derrick <laughs> Henry, 9500 bucks. Titans against the Lions. Um, Like I said, man, just going more traditional this week. Taking an absolute stud here. I don't really think I need to give a whole ton of stats on this one. You know who Derrick Henry is. Uh, he is an you absolute is, <laughs> boy. He's an absolute beast, um, especially in December. Um, and let's be honest, man, the Lions are gonna lie in. So just slam Henry into your MME builds and watch the points build up. Don't don't overthink this one. Yeah, it's it's a lot of money for King Henry. Uh, he'll 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 be fine. He he but, could go for two hundred and two touchdowns without batting an eye. But that, yeah, that, that would even. Half. That wouldn't be a big stat line. That would be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, just what we expected, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, oddly I'm enough, gonna... oddly enough, I would be shocked if he had. I mean, if he didn't have 150 yards in a touchdown, I would be surprised. I mean, that that's just that's just how good he is, how good he is in December, and how bad the Lions are. Yeah, he is. He is definitely, you know, a stretch run guy, um, and and he de- he pounds it. The, the last few games of the season, you know, while they're in that playoff push typically. So uh good pick. Uh, he's going to be, you know, people are going to roster him. He's going to be highly owned. So um, I'm staying in the same position. Uh, less than half the price for Derrick Henry. Uh, a guy that's going to get some RB1 touches this week against Atlanta is Leonard Fournette. He's priced at $4,500, um, which is uh, – Really, really solid price point uh, for an RB1. Um, and Tampa's favored by six and a half on the road uh, this week in Atlanta. You know, Rojo's out, uh, so Fournette's going to, you know, get an increased workload. Yeah, there's going to be a little McCoy, a little Vaughn, uh, but there's not going to be much. It's going to be the Leonard Fournette show. Um, and this could absolutely turn into a ground and pound game strip. Uh, Atlanta's given up about 20 points a game to opposing running backs on the season. Um, 15 to 20 touches for Fournette in this one. It's just a really solid value play, and it's a, a pretty high ceiling uh, considering what I think the game script could turn into. Yeah, I don't think that Henry's going to be quite as owned as you think. I, I think he's going to sit around 20%, which I don't think is a big deal um, just because that price tag is so high, but um, I mean, Fournette is a great pick. Uh, I mean, forty five hundred bucks for a guy that, you know, like you said, you know, very easily could get fifteen to twenty touches. Um, you know, for forty five hundred, that, that's a, that's a good one. I expect him to be somewhere in the fifteen percent neighborhood. So you know, they're gonna be, they're they're gonna both be chalky. Um, Henry more so, but um, you're definitely gonna need to save some money if you're playing Henry. So Fournette is a just terrific value there. Yeah, good good RB two option in your lineup if you're running with Henry. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you almost have to play Fournette if you play Henry. Honestly, yeah, yeah. 
Good point. Good yeah. Point. So, what about your devil this week? I feel like this is a name we talked about here in the last couple of weeks. I, I could be wrong, but yeah, he's. You know, I know we've mentioned him a few times throughout the season, at least. Um, yeah. You know, and it's matchup based. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and this is another one. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, Jared Goff, uh, the Rams have the Jets coming to town this week. Goff is priced at sixty three hundred bucks. Now, the only thing really sweeter than hearing the Jets are coming to town is hearing the Lions are coming to town right. uh, when you're opposing quarterback. Um, so, uh, you know, their defense is just absolutely pathetic at best. Uh, they're giving up about 23 points a game to opposing quarterbacks on the year. Goff is averaging about 19. You know, it's it's more of a trust issue for me with anything than Jared Goff. He's just a little too inconsistent with me excuse me, considering the weapons that he's got, you know, to work with as well. Um, and this is just a super juicy matchup on paper. And he's going to be uh, pretty high owned, I think, in my opinion, uh, at the quarterback position. Um, and I feel just that the Rams are, and I've heard it a few times, you know, as you, you watch TV or whatever, that the game script, they're just going to get off to an early lead and they're just going to turn around and they're going to hand the ball to Akers. Um, the kid had a great game last week. Uh, McVay is going to continue to try to pound the rock with him. Um, and, and Goff's going to put some points on the board. You know, there's no doubt about that. But I just don't think he's going to go apeshit crazy and throw up some kind of a uh, number point total that's going to propel your lineup uh, to make a huge difference, you know, between any other lineup. So although I like the matchup, I just think the, the Rams are going to run the ball a little bit too much um, at the 6,300 price point. I, he's a good play. Uh, I'm just going to be fading him this week. Yeah, I think golf is going to be, I don't know, 6 to 8% somewhere in that neighborhood for ownership. Um, should be outside of the top five. So uh, he's, actually, he's actually got a little bit of a sneaky value. But I do think that, you know, like you had mentioned about, you know, Cam Akers, he is just, you know, he's been killing it lately. He's been taking over that backfield and, you would expect the the Rams to get ahead and to just kind of run the ball. So I don't know that they're going to pass the ball necessarily enough to get that lead. They might run the ball and pass it to get the lead. So it is a little bit of a trust thing, like you said. Um, Now, my devil this week is actually going to be DK Metcalf, man. He's coming in at a a high price tag here, 8,600 bucks. Um, as the Seahawks take on that stupid football team. Um, so listen, man, newsflash, right? Washington D has been great all year. DK, like I said, high price tag, coming in second most expensive wide receiver on the slate. And this is kind of hard to believe because y- you think that he's been so good all year, but he has struggled recently. He's got just one game over 2x value in the past five. So that whole offense has just been struggling. Yeah. Um, now listen, I will say this, all right, DK going to be under 5% owned this week, um, really could honestly make for a really good contrarian play if you opted to, uh, go overweight on him. Uh, personally, I'm going to be underweight even on the 5% ownership. Uh, no question he's in my player pool. There's no way you take DK Metcalf out of the player pool, but I don't know that I'm going to end up with any shares of him. Uh, I mean, really what it comes down to is I'd rather spend that money on Henry. You know, even if Henry's going to be in the 20% neighborhood, um, I think your money is much better spent there. I totally agree. If you're going to spend that kind of cheddar, um, you know, give it to a guy that he's he's guaranteed he's going to touch the ball 20 freaking times. And as explosive as Henry is, uh, way way higher floor. For Henry, oh, than, oh my God, not even yeah, and ceiling for Metcalf, way Especially higher floor. Washington's defense. I mean, like you said, they have been really, really good this year. Um, so I like that one. That's a good one. Uh, why don't uh, why don't you share your your pivot this week, Dave? Well, uh, pivot this week, and, and this one's maybe slightly outdated, but I guess we'll officially see. Um, I got in here Alvin Kamara. He's seventy four hundred bucks uh, for the Saints going up against the Chiefs this week. Now, if Drew Brees does end up playing this week, then I think that Kamara is going to end up being pretty popular. 
um, because, you know, his usage should skyrocket, um, specifically, you know, just compared to what we've seen recently uh, with him, uh, with Taysom Hill under center. So, you know, f- basically for, for that reason, um, I'm going to skip a lot of the analysis on this because, I mean, just like, you know, Derrick Henry, y- you know exactly who this guy is. You know what he brings to the table, okay? I, I don't need to give you numbers and stats to explain to you who Alvin Kamara is. Um, it's really simple for me. If Breeze is in, then Kamara is going to be a great play, but he's going to be a little high owned. Uh, if Hill is under center, I think Kamara actually is a little bit of a sneaky option. He did have a pretty decent game last week, um, and I think he's going to be low owned. So, like we talked about earlier, keep a tabs on those inactives at 11:30, and just you know verify if indeed Drew Brees is it and starting, and make your decision off of that. Yeah, and as of, and I'm not sure if you saw this, but as of 3.30 this afternoon, Sean Payton uh, expects Drew Brees to start the game uh, Sunday, although uh, probably split care, or split snaps uh, with Hill. Uh, but I totally agree with you when it comes to Alvin Kamara. He is, his production is just at a different level when he's got Drew Brees uh, behind center. Um, and especially, you know, uh, uh, injured Breeze, you know, coming back, uh, he's, I feel like he's going to dump the ball off a little bit more um, than maybe normal. Uh, yeah, and, and one, one other thing, that Michael Thomas is ruled out already for that game. So, oh, I didn't um, see that. Yeah, so especially if Breeze is in, um, which it seems like that's where we're headed, I yeah. really think that that super boosts Kamara now because – you know, Breeze obviously likes to, you know, get him the rock. Um, yeah. It, you know, again, whether it's, you know, through the air or on the ground, doesn't matter. And so if, you know, well, not if, with Michael Thomas being out as well, Drew Breeze plays, I think Kamara becomes a guy that's about, I don't know, eleven, twelve hundred dollars $1,200 under, undervalued. Um, you won't be able to slide Henry in there, I don't think. I don't know how that would be possible. Um, but... Um, you know, if you wanted to get a little bit different, even though Kamara is going to be, like I said, pretty high owned, I think, with Breeze in there. Um, yeah. At least it could get you off Henry and the off chance that, you know, he only has 125 yards in a touchdown instead of, you know, 202. So, yeah, Kamara, great, great value play at 7,400 bucks with Drew Breeze's quarterback and no Michael Thomas. So yeah. I like that one. Um, you know, for me, talking about quarterbacks, uh, I'm I'm going. You know, we're back to we're back to this Lions team, uh, and and I got the quarterback. You know, that's that's holding down the fort in Tennessee, and and that's Ryan Tannehill uh, at sixty seven hundred bucks. This is going to be my pivot, and obviously this is a pivot from uh, Henry. Uh, you know, everybody is going to be paying up for King Henry this week, uh, except for me. Uh, I'm. You know, I'm sure I'll have him in a lineup or two, but it's going to be minimal. Um, and I'm going to be pivoting to Ryan Tannehill. You know, obviously, you know, people aren't going to stack Henry with Tannehill. So I don't feel like there's going to be a lot of ownership this weekend on him. Uh, he's the sixth highest priced quarterback um, and really solidly priced, I think, at about $6,700. He's averaging just about 21 and a half points a game. Um, and you know, as much attention as Derrick Henry has drawn this season, uh, Tannehill is very, very quietly having another very good season. 28 touchdowns, only five picks, throwing it for about 250 yards a game. His QB rating, I think I saw, was almost 109. It doesn't mean anything for what we do here, but um, that's impressive. Um, And he's significantly more productive um, at home on the season um, as well. At home uh, in seven games, he's thrown 19 touchdown passes. On the road in six games, he's only thrown nine. Uh, that may not mean anything, uh, but it's one of those stats that I'm looking at. So, you know, this matchup against those lowly Detroit Lions um, that are in the bottom quarter of the league, uh, giving up about 22 points a game to opposing quarterbacks, the biggest fear that I have rostering Tannehill is that with Stafford possibly out, um, it's going to limit Detroit's ability to score. 
Um, and that could potentially turn this type of game into the one that all the Derek Henry owners want where they're just turning around and handing them the rock. Sure, yeah. But, I mean, the one thing that I will say is, you know, I kind of feel like this might be a week where your lineup either needs to have Derrick Henry in it or it needs to have a Tannehill stack because one of them are going to score a shit ton of points. Right. I, they both might score a shit ton of points, but somebody's scoring points. So you can bet your ass on that. Um and you've really got to just kind of pick your poison. You're going to have, honestly, a more unique lineup, of course, with you know a Tannehill stack. He's probably going to be, I don't know, man, 5% owned, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and you've got good stacking options. I mean, you've got A.J. Brown. you got Corey Davis. You can stack him with both. Um, so, I mean, you definitely can get a lineup with a lot of upside in it. Yeah. Um, that has a, a chance to do real well. And if Henry does falter, I mean, let's say the guy gets hurt or something. I don't know, man. But if somehow he falters, then that means that Tannehill probably had himself a day and all those Henry owners are going to be, you know, bummed out while the Tannehill owners are going to be just feeling like the smartest guy in the room, you know. So that that is another, that is an, a, an obvious but a very good pivot because I don't know how many people are going to have the cojones to be like, ah, eh, fuck that Derrick Henry guy and his, and his yeah. weird ass fucking crocodile ponytail. Oh, <laughs> uh, how about, uh, how about the, this is our favorite one every week, you know? No, we, no it's we, not. Well, <laughs> about how difficult it can be. Uh, I see we got uh, a couple of receivers though. You want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Got a couple of of good receivers too. Um, I mm-hmm. mean, contrarian play of the week a lot of times ends up being some dumpster fire. Um, but I mean, these are two good players just in in situations, man. Um, my guy is DJ Shark. He's five grand for the Jags, uh, going up against those Ravens. Um, I think that it's going to be a surprise to a lot of people to to know that Ravens are actually giving up the six most points per game to opposing wide receivers. I was surprised by that personally, so I expect everybody else to maybe be surprised by that. But yeah, I wouldn't have thought that either. No, 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 man. But in this game, uh, Jags are almost certain to be playing from behind. So whomever it is that's under center is going to be chucking the old mistletoe around, man. When healthy, DJ Shark, do 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 do, is the best wide receiver on that team, and it's not even close, honestly. I expect him to get a lot of volume this week in a matchup where um, you probably will see his ownership under the 5% mark. I don't typically have a lot of love for my contrarian plays, but honestly, this is one I can really get behind, man. Yeah, that's uh, uh, like, like you said. The Ravens giving up the six most points a game to receivers isn't isn't a stat that I I thought would uh, would come out of that. Um, you know, you think of the Ravens and their defense, and uh, they're pretty solid um, across the ball. And DJ Shark, he gets a ton of targets. Um, you forgot the do 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 do. DJ Shark, do 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 do. DJ right. Shark, that one. Yeah, the, uh, thank you. Okay. That's okay, uh, we're contractually welcome. obligated to do that. Right. This is another one. Who are we expecting the check for from that one? Um, you know what? Oddly enough, I think um Adam Schefter is going to be cutting this week's check. Perfect. I like Schefter. It's like a He's middle man thing, but him and I are boys, so he gets oh, it from cool. his people, and then he gives it to my people, and then I, you know, hand it out to whomever. So. Yeah, cool. You got I good connections. I, I like I'm it. not one to brag, so let's just move <laughs> on. So, my contrarian play this week, you know, like we said, I'm talking to a couple couple pretty solid receivers here and i've got amari cooper uh for them dallas cowgirls they got the niners coming to town cooper's at 6400 bucks this week now this is another defense where you think oh wow san francisco they've got a good powerhouse d you know they're pretty solid across the ball well they've been about middle of the road middle of the pack the entire season um as far as opposing opposing wide receivers production they're giving up about 35 a game um and cooper averaging about 17 a game on the season um he scored a touchdown in each of his last three uh gonna be shadowed probably by sherman 
Um, and I don't remember where I heard it. Um, they had some good stats. I couldn't find it again, but the word on the street, you know, is that, oh, Richie Sherman's kind of slowing down a little bit. Uh, and he's just not the, the DB that he once was. Uh, I think Cooper's going to get a pretty decent amount of targets. The price is pretty decent for a wide receiver one. And I just don't think he's going to be highly owned at all because of the matchup. This is a contrarian play. Mari Cooper, $6,400. Doll hairs. Yeah, um, sure. I mean, I don't, I don't feel strongly one way or the other, so um <laughs> why don't you hop in to i mean speaking of uh dallas cowboy receivers uh yeah. why don't you why don't you hop into your uh your hail mary for this week well let me start by cracking another diabolical they're delicious tonight um des bryant uh we talked about them baltimore ravens and that jaguars team that's coming to town uh, the Jags are giving up 42 a game to opposing receivers. There will be no Hollywood Brown this weekend. Uh, some of those targets are definitely going to filter down to a very dejected and hungry Des Bryant. Um, and for the minimum of $3,000, um, this could be a nice little play. Uh, he'll probably be uh, pretty decently owned. At 3K with Brown out, um, but I'm looking at your note, and I'm totally wrong on that. Yeah, you <laughs> are. Really I was going to ask you if you uh, <laughs> wanted to take a guess at his ownership because I was curious what you were going to say. Um, wow. Because whatever it was, you were going to be way off. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so Dave uh, put a little note in here that says De- uh, Des Bryant is going to be somewhere around 1-ish percent owned this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, so he's a hail mary, all right. He is a hail mary. Uh, um, I won't be touching bucks. him. He you won't. Know, he so, won't be in my player pool this week. Let's huh? just put it that way. Okay. How about you? Who do you? Oh, what do you? Yeah. What do you got going on over here? Ah, uh, you know, I got another guy that, depending on the circumstances, may not be in my fucking player pool. Um, uh, we've been down this road before, man. Um, I feel like this is uh, what is it? How, um, listen, it, it feels like my Hail Deja Mary. Vu. Yes, that's my, what I'm looking for. This is deja vu. My my Hail Mary sometimes tends to be a quarterback because you know that I'm thrifty. I'm almost fifty, and I can rhyme. Listen, <laughs> Chase Daniel, man, five K Lions versus Titans. We've talked about this game at nauseum. I'm gonna talk about it some more, Patrick. Please do. Listen, this one is quite simple, all right? With that being said, I'm still about to talk a lot about it, okay? Okay. Listen, there is not a dead obvious QB play this week, period. Pricing this week, as it typically is as the season goes on, is getting pretty rough, man. If Stafford has to miss this game, we've, again, I rinse and repeat, I'm a, I'm a broken record on this because I've talked about this before. Daniels is going to be throwing that ball until either his arms fall off or that motherfucker is carted off the field, all right? This is purely a salary cap and matchup play. This does violate rule number one. We are not playing a good player. Um, <laughs> listen, the only thing that I think could realistically keep him from throwing that ball 40-plus times would be if the Titans don't break any big plays uh, and they just end up dominating the time of possession – and not letting the Motor City Kitties touch the ball. Uh, with Daniel, the stacking options really aren't that great. Uh, I mean, Hawkinson is fine, but let's be honest, he's never had a ceiling game, and I don't think he's going to get one with Chase Daniel. Uh, Marvin Jones, he has had many ceiling games in his career, but he is very inconsistent, so that leaves a lot to be desired there. Now, you could get real sneaky, and not to brag or anything, but I did almost win about, oh, I don't know, ten to $25,000 last week in a, with a lineup that had Danny Amendola as my run back um, with my Aaron Rodgers stack. But let's be honest, man. Do you really think that a lineup with a stack of Chase Daniels and Danny Amendola is really going to get you a, a tournament bink? 
listen, if you're making this move, you are doing so with the mindset that Daniels and your stacking option, whoever it is, is going to hit value. And the savings will allow you to pick the rest of the lineup correctly. This will allow you to have a pretty unique lineup, maybe a very unique lineup, um, that scores well. Um, and like we said, maybe you can make you the smartest man in the room there, or maybe the richest man in the room for a while. One thing I do want to talk about here, though, because I intentionally left it out and I want to address it real quick. Personally, I would not be stacking DeAndre Swift with Daniels here. Swift absolutely, absolutely is the type of running back that you would typically put into a stack. But because he's not going to save you any salary, um, he really then defeats the purpose of, of doing this stack because you're not doing it because you think it's going to go crazy. You're doing it because you think you can kind of steal some dollars, hit value, and then be able to maybe throw a Kamara in with a Derrick Henry. So, um, I don't know, man. I don't know if Stafford's going to play or not, but Chase Daniels, like I said, he's going to get the opportunity to throw that ball until something happens. I don't know. His arm literally might fall off. Yeah, and, you know, <clears throat> there are mixed – reviews on Matt Stafford but the one thing that we know about the guy is he's a pretty tough SOB yeah he is uh, and and I think it's it's gonna take a lot to keep him out of this game but I I, I mean they said that he ripped didn't he rip like cartilage or something right off of the rib or something I thought I heard I honestly so, couldn't tell you I don't I do not mean, know here's what I do know way, Chase Daniel yeah. will be like literally like a tenth Nobody of a percent owned. Either. Like no one yeah. is going to play him, and he really has a very legitimate chance to hit value. Like, he's going to throw the ball so many goddamn times, he could throw four picks and still easily hit value. I mean, yeah, and like you said, the stacking options for the run back. Uh, I mean, you got. I, you, I you don't could even know what to tell back you. Him. I mean, and and, he, and Brown <laughs> and Davis. Uh, yeah, creative for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, you're going to have to play, like I said, you have to play Derrick Henry here. So, I mean, to be honest with you, if I was going to stack it, I, I, I honestly, I'm, you already are going to, I mean, you're already going to have to kind of get pretty lucky to hit the rest of the lineup, but but that's okay. I, I swear to you, I would either stack him with Cephas or I'd probably stack him with Amendola because... If you stack him with Hawkinson or Jones, it's the same as, as Swift. You're just not saving the salary, so what's the point? Um, you really have to go Amendola or Cephas. Probably Amendola, he has a much better ceiling, but his ceiling literally is, what, eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown? Like, that's probably his ceiling. But um, if he hits that, you're in good shape. You got Henry in there. That means Henry probably had a good game. Um, you know, and then you've got some salary to play with. Yeah, and Chase Daniel stacking him with Danny Amendola, folks, is the definition of a Hail Mary. It is. Um, it is. So, but if uh, you remember, um, Jeff Driscoll last year, two weeks in a row, made me made me a lot of money because no one was playing him. And, you know, it was a similar situation. Galladay was in. Um, I think Galladay was in. Well, it doesn't really fucking matter, but point is it was very similar. Yeah. Uh, well, another uh, another night down. Um, you know, before we we head on out, uh, you know, this is the last time we're gonna we're gonna get a chance to talk to you before the holidays. So personally, I just uh, like to wish everybody and their families a very uh, merry Christmas. Um, enjoy your time with one another. Be kind. Um, you know, help spread some Christmas joy. Um, reach out to somebody, say hello. Uh, you know, it's a tough time for everybody around the holidays, um, especially with everything that we're going through this year. Um, so be a good human, be a good person. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And, Patrick, and, I, and I know for a fact that being the kind and, and generous person you are, that around this time of the year, I know that you've got a huge sack Full of presents for those that you love. Yes, I do. 
I will right. be sharing. We'll be sharing that with one person, though. <laughs> Oh, well, I look forward to it, my friend. <laughs> All right, brother. All Good right. luck, everyone. Well, before I get sexual assault charges, we're going to go ahead and take off, everyone. So we will see you next week. Cheers.